Hey guys, David here. And as I've talked about before, Meteor comes with an accounts UI package that provides basically default login and logout interface elements. So we can easily add an account interface to our application. So things like a registration form, a login form, a logout button, that kind of stuff. We simply add a package to the project and we don't have to create the interface ourselves. But what if you do want to create the interface? What if you want to make something that's completely custom, completely integrated with your project? Well, that is what I'm going to show you how to do in this video. And like with most things in Meteor, it's actually pretty simple. So what we're going to do first is add the accounts password package to the project. So we go Meteor add accounts password. And this will create a very basic backend for our account system because we don't want to create all the custom logic and the collection and all that kind of stuff. We do want Meteor to do some of the work for us. But again, this is just the back end. There is no interface for this. So that package is now added, which means we can go to the console, for instance, and go meteor.users. And this is the name of the collection that holds all the data about the users. So that's all set up, which is great. And now we basically just want to make our interface how we want to make it. So we'll switch over to the text editor and just create a very basic registration form. So I'll just make this template called register make sure it's included and then just make a basic HTML form nothing special uh, just make sure that each text field has a um, ID so we'll make the first one email we'll make the second one password type equals, pa equals password ID equals password as well and we go input type equals submit uh, register so that's a very basic form make sure it looks good looks good enough I guess and we copy and paste that and we'll create a login form which is going to be basically the same uh, just different template name different text for the button and we've got to include that of course register login it's not the most beautiful thing in the world but it's good enough and now we can switch to the JavaScript file and we're going to create an event for either of these forms so it's going to be very basic, we'll go if Meteor is client, because we only want this code running within the web browser itself. We'll make one, make an event for the register template. Submit form. We'll need to reference both the event itself and the content of the template. So we'll prevent the default functionality of the form. And then we will grab the uh, the content from the form fields. So how we do that is go, let's give it a name, so email var equals template and then we'll find the element with the ID of email and we'll get the value from that and then we can just do the exact same thing for the password field because template.find password ID value. Okay, and then we can do a console log statement that will just say form submitted. Perfect. So now if we go back to the web browser, we can just click the register button and it will say form submitted and that's all we need for the moment. So go back to the editor and copy this entire events block because we, we basically need the exact same code for the login template. So change that to login and that's all you have to do. So now both of our forms will respond to the submit event. And it's at this point that we can actually make our forms do something and to figure out what they can do we can head to the documentation for Meteor and we're interested at the moment in this passwords section and you can see a bunch of different account related functions available to us. There's create user, change password, forgot password, reset password, a bunch of different options. And all these functions are provided to us by the accounts password package and just by looking at their names you can get a pretty good idea of what they do. In this particular case though we're going to focus on the accounts.createUser package. And so how we use this is inside our submit form event for the register template. We can just get rid of that console log statement. And we go accounts.createUser. And then within this function, we pass through a few different options. By default, the only options you need are email and password. And of course, we have the email and the password in these variables. So what we can do is just go email. And then we reference the email variable and then password and we reference the password variable and we save that and that is all we need to do. This create user function is going to create the user by adding the user's data to the media.users collection. It's going to encrypt the password for us so that's completely automatic. 
and it's also going to log the user into their account as soon as they register. So it really is quite elegant how it all works together. And if we save that file and we switch back to Chrome and we just go to our application, we can simply just type an email. Let's type my email and go register. And we are registered. You know, you can't really see anything at the moment, but if we go media.users.find.fetch, you'll see that the user is created within the collection. And you can see that right here. For absolute proof of this, we'll make it so these forms don't show up when the user is logged in. And to do that, we just go to the HTML file and over here we go, if current user and the current user object returns true if the current user is logged in. So if logged in, here we go, you're logged in. And then we go else because we don't want these forms showing up. And then we close that, close that conditional, move just over there and yeah, whatever, save that file, switch back to Chrome, and this should all disappear. There are of course a couple of problems though because our login form doesn't work and we don't actually have a way to log out at this point. So first we'll just create a way to log out because that is very very simple. So we'll just go back to the HTML file and we'll just create a new template. Let's we'll go template name equals dashboard, doesn't really matter. Then we'll create the link within here and just goes log out make sure this link has an id actually in a class of log out so we can reference it within the javascript file um, we will move this logged in message into the template itself and then we'll put the template in here so this dashboard template will only show up if the user is logged in and then within the javascript file we'll create a new event we'll go template.dashboard.events and we'll go click on the logout class and we will pass through the event itself so we go event.prevent default so this link won't do anything it'll only do what we want it to do and then at that point all we have to do is go meteor.logout and again this is a function provided to us by the accounts password package it just makes it very simple to log out the user let's put the semicolon down here and save all that and go back to chrome We've got this logout link, and as you'll see, we go logout, and it logs us out. As for the login form, it is once again very simple to set up, so we just switch back to the text editor, and I realize we should probably change these ID fields because they should be unique. So that'll be login email, login password, and we'll save that, and make sure we make the same change over here in the HTML file. Uh, just login email, login password, save all that and we'll get rid of this console log statement. But what we can do now is use another function that is provided to us by the accounts password package. And this function is password. And what we can do is simply pass through the email and the password as the arguments. So we go email var, password var, and that is it. If we switch back to Google Chrome, we should be able to see that this works perfectly fine. We'll just type in the email and then the password, and go log in, and it works. And then of course we can log out once again, and we can register, and all that kind of stuff. This is far from a complete interface because we haven't taken into account errors and validation and all this kind of stuff. There is definitely more to consider when creating your own custom form, but this is at least enough to get you started. And based on what we covered here, if you go to the media documentation and you scroll down to the uh, the account section and just look through everything that's available specifically you know create user and also the login with password section you should be able to just learn a bit more about it although since there's so much to talk about I will definitely come back to it in the future